dead end. Ah, the Lincoln Highway ends. Wow, wow. Well, good morning, everybody. Microphone plugged in? Yep. I want to have a good day today, even though not only is this possibly the end of the line, but uh, last day in Iowa for Lincoln Highway. Look, it just ends right here. It's not anticlimactic, but that's it. Oh, this is cool. Lincoln Highway, Lynn County Seedling Mile. Huh. I mean, it abruptly ends right here, guys. There's, there's nothing, nothing past it. But luckily, they can just build a new highway right next to it. And that's what happens. But wait, I, I want to read this. This is important because this is the site of the first and only seedling mile of the concrete pavement in this state of Iowa on the Lincoln Highway. This is the only piece. Okay. And it was built only 16 feet wide. Yeah, that wouldn't work in, t in today's automobiles. Look, guys, uh, as far as my last video, I have good days and bad days just like you. I do. Um, I share a lot of my life, not every bit of my life. I even skip days sometimes, but sometimes you see some raw emotions for me based on stuff I can't control. I can't control everything on the road. It's just the way it goes. So today we're just getting ready to turn the generator on. It's like 10 a.m. right now. I'm gonna run the generator and cab air conditioner on the RV from basically noon until about 8 p.m. tonight. So the whole traveling, every time I stop, windows closed, air conditioning on, and I think that's gonna help me stay sane, Jack stay happy, and thus all of us end up being happy, right? Okay, cool? All right, let's finish up the last little bit of Iowa here. Hopefully there's gonna be some fun history before we get into a new state. Good thing I took that little detour. Oh, this is so cool. I can't wait to show you this off the highway. Guys, remember American Gothic? So they painted it on their barn, that's huge. The artist is M. Benish 2008. They've got a surveillance camera on the side of the barn so that nobody's gonna spray paint their graffiti gang signs on it. Beautiful work, guys. That's a gorgeous recreation. Thumbs up, man, cool. So I'm gonna stick to the original Lincoln Highway for about 20 miles, and then I'm gonna head back south and connect up with the 80 for a specific stop. Well, I am very excited about this stop. I'm not sure if it looks quite as hazy and muggy as it is to you. It is thick with heat. Um, but here, we, that's not all me, by the way. That's my generator and his generator. Just wanted to point that out. But the Interstate 80 Trucking Museum, the largest truck stop in America, not to be confused with the largest travel center in America. That was in Wyoming at Little America. Travel center because they have lodging and motels and stuff. But this holds the record for the largest truck stop. And they have a museum. Looks like it's open. Air conditioning, maybe. It'd be cool if I can get like a drone aerial so you can see all the trucking spots and the RV parking and all the signs and everything. It's a massive area. There's three different pilot gas stations on the same block. That's how big it is. And this is the Trucking Museum. Woo! And it's free? Fantastic. What are we gonna find? A 1918 independent truck. Here we have a 1927 GMC Big Brute 10 ton. Yeah, buddy. Look at all those old gas pumps. Woo! Here we have a Bowman, a 1911 Walker Electric Model 43. Look at the wood. Peeling paint all over the place. Man. Holy cow. I am not going to be able to show you everything in here. I will show you some of the stuff I like the most, though. This is awesome. A 35 Dodge Airflow, a 49 Brockway, a 1918 Walker with the wood paneling in the back, 1933 White Model 612. A 1939 International Armored Truck, like a police truck. Oh my gosh, look at that truck and camper. That's a beautiful Ford. Ooh! 68, 250. 
International. We got a GMC, a Diamond T, and another Diamond T, the fire truck. Cab over. Hmm. All right, these are getting stranger and stranger. A 54 Feggio van. Wow. Is it like an RV? It's a moving truck. Okay. A 74 Ryder Paymaster R100. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, that's beautiful, Kenworth. Look at that. Oh, here's Tomater's dad. Do I even need to say it? Come check this place out for yourself. This is awesome. But Eric, did you get a magnet? Of course. Haven't got one in a while. There's what it went with. World's largest truck stop, Walcott, Iowa. Sweet. Yeah, still here in, in Walcott, getting ready to get back on Lincoln Highway. But you know, if I had to live in a house, if I couldn't live in an RV, I would at least want to live in a house built like a castle. Because <laughs> quirky, right? I'll uh, stay on the sidewalk because this is a private residence here. But apparently they just wanted a pretend castle. I don't see a moat. That's, that's pretty cool though. I like it. So we're driving through LeClaire, Iowa right now. And uh, for reference, Three of my favorite TV shows when I had satellite in my RV was Pawn Stars, Storage Wars, and American Pickers. Three shows about acquiring or collecting odd, random, quirky stuff. Makes sense, right? Well, LeClaire, Iowa is home to the starts and the shop of one of those TV shows. But we're gonna go see if they're open and see if Mike, Frank, or Danielle are, are available. Now forgive me if I geek out just a little bit. I'm pretty excited. Does anybody recognize this storefront here? That's the one, guys. This is where American Pickers started. There's the car out front, seen on the show all the time. They have this building that I don't recognize, actually. Might as well check it out. There we are, guys. We're inside. Look at all these treasures. I need a magnet too. I need a magnet. Huh. There's Frank's favorite. Cool. Fun stop. Got my magnet. I will show you later. But uh, no sign of Frank, Mike, or Danielle at this location. They're probably at the Tennessee store, actually. This is the other store part where they just sell more stuff, basically. A little mini indie in there. Ooh, here's some rusty art. Ooh. Holy cow. Fun stop. Made me smile. Made me smile to see something I've been watching on TV for years and years and years, right? I don't know. It's cool. Little out of the way. Now I gotta go back west a little bit. Um, it's uh, funny too because I always picture their shop to be out in the middle of the woods in Iowa just because they always have the driving shots in the woods and then they pull into the shop. Now, this is right off Main Street. There's like no trees or woods anywhere. It's like right off the street. Uh, there's the magnet I got. I picked the Pickers. Antique Archaeology. Put that up by our new trucker magnet there. Oh yeah! Looking good on the magnets. It's weird though, in that second little just gift shop store, they had five employees with antique archaeology t-shirts. And in the, the retail store there alone, they had four more employees. That's just what I counted. So they got nine employees running their old store. And well, Mike and Frank and Danielle are either in Tennessee or on the road collecting or whatever. So I would say TV has probably done them well, just like Pawn Stars. But, you know, it's, it's crazy. All right, we do need to talk, guys, because I'm going to make a change. Again, Illinois right there. I'm going to take a little break on Lincoln Highway. Again, I have a friend down south, and so I'm going to go spend a couple days, take care of a few things down south, plug in with air conditioning, and then uh, I'll come back up, and we'll, we'll finish Lincoln Highway, or we'll, we'll continue on. So... 
Uh, I always feel like I need to address that because some people are like, some people will leave comments and be like, Eric, that's 15 miles off Lincoln Highway. Why'd you stop there? Yeah, well, Lincoln Highway is my loose route. Just so you know. That's a cool park though. I'm gonna look for a sign. That's Lincoln. And I don't know, a railroad worker? Let's, let's find some info here. No, guys, oh, okay. And Lincoln said to the boy on the bridge, I'm mighty glad I came out here where I can get a little rest, opinion, a little more fact. Yeah, I need that too. Very cool. But uh, I am going to go into Illinois tonight and go to the first Walmart. I think it's in Moline. M Molina? Moline? Because uh, there's, there's no free campsites around here, obviously. But... Uh, that's about all I really want to say. I don't even think I shared, showed Jax. He's doing well. He's staying cool inside the RV with the air conditioning, which is obviously where I'm headed as well. But I just want you all to know that I'm doing fine, doing well. I, I know what I'm doing. The RV is still running fantastic. I mean, how many states have we now? And still no check engine light. Oh, crap. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, no, RV is running great, guys, and that's a really good thing. Boy, have I poured a lot into this RV. It's worked well for me. Jeez, I've had this thing, what, now two and a half years? That is now definitely longer than any vehicle I have ever owned in my life, any vehicle of any kind. And once you get to this point, you know exactly what's been replaced in the RV, when it's been replaced. I, you know, I know off the top of my head when the last fuel pump and catalytic converter and tune up and all this. So I feel like we're caught up. I mean, no matter what happens now, it's just a matter of just maintaining it and keeping it on the road. She'll do 200,000 miles. I really believe that. So, all right, folks. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. Jackson and, I, Jackson and I will give you an update uh, once we get all parked down south and let you know what's going on. Goodbye. Okay,